Advent is this annual season of our year that most accurately reminds us of our location on the timeline of salvation history. And every year, it reminds us that we are living in the meantime, between the time of the resurrected Christ's return to his Father and waiting for him to come again in glory and majesty as our judge at the end of time. Well, that is the simple truth. It isn't always clearly understood by many who tend to think of this season mainly as a time to prepare for the celebration of Christmas, when in fact, until the 17th of December, Advent's focus is primarily on waiting for that second coming of Christ, which is yet to happen, rather than the first coming of Christ that occurred now two millennia ago. When when we come to its third Sunday, we are told to rejoice. And this imperative seems repeated throughout the readings and prayers of the Mass today, on the Sunday that we call Gaudete in Latin, the one for which Bach wrote his well-known chorale, Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring. Yes, we are told to be joyful, but why? Because Christmas is closer? With all the expectations our culture places on the celebration of Christmas, especially for those who end up hosting those celebrations, that may at this point be more a cause for stress than for joy. Be joyful. Why? Because the second coming of Christ is closer with the passing of each day, each year, though still that day will remain unknown? Hmm, the idea of meeting Christ as judge is not exactly high on many bucket lists, especially for those who think they'll be warned in sufficient time to change their ways before they have to answer to him. Advent's annual theme is always get ready, remain ready, because the arrival of Christ is destined to take everyone, without any exception, by surprise. So clearly, these are probably not the reasons that are likely to cause us to be able to rejoice at this particular moment. Rather, the readings tell us what it is that can bring us joy. It is the truth that the Lord who came among us once in history and for whom we are still waiting to come in glory, is not only near, but he's actually already here. Indeed, the Lord is in our midst, even at this very moment, and maybe especially at this moment when we find ourselves gathering here to celebrate Mass, because here he comes among us not only because two or three are gathered in his name, but because our purpose in coming here is to open our ears to hear his word and then to consecrate bread and wine in his memory according to his explicit instruction. And so, as promised, he is here among us in sacramental mystery, teaching us through the scriptures and coming not only to dwell among us, but actually within us through the Eucharist that he has left for that very purpose. This is a most comforting truth, but only if we fully believe it and we frequently contemplate it. There are many very real causes for anxiety, for fear, for uneasiness, maybe even despair, depending on our own personal situations at any given moment in time in regard to our health, our age, our family situations, our employment or our educational challenges, our finances, 
and our personal difficulties, and certainly the world in which we find ourselves living and much of the news that comes to us from that world each day is seldom a cause for joy. Yet that is precisely why the message today is rejoice, which in the Latin gaudete is reflective, meaning make yourself joyful. That's the more proper translation. How? Clearly, by not some of the mindless merriment that is often encouraged in our culture at this time of year, but rather by having an unshakable faith and so developing a deep trust in that truth that the Lord is with us in spite of what may be going on within our particular circle of life or all around us at this moment in time. The Lord who is giver of life, the Lord who is the source of a love that is unconditional, the Lord who is, as the psalmist sings, always kind and merciful, is with us no matter what. How often do we stop to think that this is precisely why, rather than say to you good morning today as we started the liturgy, instead, as the presider, a profound prayer wish is extended to you instead. The Lord be with you. Because far beyond having a good morning or a day, which are temporary and fleeting, you are being wished the ultimate best, that the Lord be ever with you. And indeed, he is with you just for the asking, and especially so in the praying and the singing, the hearing of the word and the receiving of his body and blood. So no matter the difficulties and stresses of the lives we are living as we come here this morning, no matter of the chaos in the world around us to which we will return when we are dismissed from here, we can be joyful, not only while in here, but also out there, because the truth is that the Lord is with us. Indeed, gaudete, make yourself joyful, for by this imperative, we are being told the simple but profound truth that in the end, happiness for us is an inside job. Ultimately, the cause of our joy never comes from outside of us, but actually from within us. For we can rejoice, and not only at a particular season of the year, but always so long as we have faith and remain mindful that the Lord is not only near, he is actually in us. And with the joy that accompanies that assurance also comes the peace that St. Paul promised to the Philippians in our second reading, the peace that may be beyond all understanding to those who have no faith in a very troubled world, but which is profoundly present and unshakable in the hearts of those who believe.